Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Mastella. These are the Joint Jack Chronicles. Finger extension test. What we're going to do today is discuss a specific part of examining the wrist. Hand surgery is still almost entirely a clinical entity. The diagnosis of problems of the hand are in your hands. They are clinical phenomena. If I see this wrist and I examine it and I don't know what's wrong with it, I can send it for MRIs and CAT scans and sonograms and anything you can name. When it all comes back, I'm still not gonna know what's wrong with this wrist. It's a clinical entity. It has to be diagnosed with your history, your observation, and with your hands in a clinical examination. And the, the one little, the, the test we're gonna discuss is what we call finger extension test. And I'll, let me show it to you first, and then we'll backtrack a bit. You passively flex the wrist. She extends just as hard as she can. I ask her, all right, push back, keep your fingers together. And then I put my, my other hand right across her PIP joints and push. And that is just about as hard as I can push without changing my, my configuration, all right? 20 years ago, when we were working on various exams, such as the scaphoid shift test and the like, we were trying to figure out how do you bring the loads of life into the office so that you can examine them. In other words, if she were chopping wood or if she were a pitcher throwing a ball at 100 miles an hour, the loads across those eight carpal bones is phenomenal. The, 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 the load is impossible to reproduce in a clinical setting. We can sit here and play with it and say, does this hurt and does that hurt and push things around. And if there's synovitis, we can pick up where the synovitis is, but we can't replicate those loads. So we were looking at a lot of different ways to replicate that sort of load that occurs in the field. And the answer, one of the answers is to make the loads change direction. If you take these carpals and you bend the wrist all the way down, and then load it. And I mean, you're really putting a lot of load when I force down on those fingers. She's using just about everything she's got. The, the 90 degree change of direction of those loads approximate what would happen if she were chopping wood or the like. And it lets you pick up things that you can't pick up just pushing and pulling and feeling a wrist, all right? Um, it, it lets you know that there is no abnormality in the load-bearing column. It means that index and middle metacarpal, carpal boss, rotary subluxation, scaphoid nonunion, Keenbox disease, any of the, any of the uh, phenomena that occur in the load column, that is index and middle metacarpal, the capitate trapezium trapezoid, scaphoid lunate to radius. And it tells you that there is no structural abnormality in those if they can hold those fingers up against load like that. And its real value comes in that when it's negative, you can be assured or rest assured that you don't have significant abnormality in the load column. Let's say this is a patient who's been out of work for nine months and they come in and tell me that their wrist kills them every time, they can't possibly work, they've had therapy, they've had cortisone injections, and they're still on comp, and this wrist is just terrible. And you look at it, and you don't see much in the way of synovitis, and you say, well, all right, let's take a look at it. Ah, ah. Ah, excuse me, I didn't mean to hurt you. Let, let me just look at it gently. Oh, that hurts. So it, it becomes right away very difficult to examine it, okay? The patient's not going to let you near it. Let's say, well, all right, well, let's look at the rest of this. So you take the other hand and you say, all right, no trouble with your fingers. Fingers don't bother you. No. Push against my hand, good, all right. And this didn't hurt when I bend them. Let's see the fingers on this side. Doesn't hurt? No. Push them against my hand. Gotcha. The point is, it's a substitution maneuver. I can now be comfortable with the fact that there is no structural abnormality of any significance or synovitis in the load-bearing column of her wrist. That does not include distal radial ulnar joint, tilt syndrome, CMC joint of the thumb, de veins, and issues outside of the load column. But what a huge advantage it is to have one test that works in a substitution pattern like that 
so that you can comfortably say that risk does not have structural abnormality involving the major load-bearing column. And that is the finger extension test.